Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today I'm very excited to be reviewing the Beauty of Horror Ghosts of Christmas special colouring book. This has just dropped through my door literally five minutes ago and I've had a quick flick through and I just knew that I'd have to jump on and do this review and sort of get the full appreciation of each page with you as I usually do when I receive any of the new books from Alan Robert because you know how much I love horror. Um, and this one is just, first of all, I didn't even realise it was going to be this size. So I knew that it was going to have less pages than the standard beauty of horror books, um, but I didn't check the listing properly. I didn't look at the sizes and the dimensions. And it's actually really small and cute and compact. I absolutely adore it. I really wasn't expecting it to be that small. Um, it is, in fact, 17.9 by 18.6 centimetres, according to the Amazon listing. And just in case you want to see that kind of visually, here is a standard beauty of horror book. And we'll put that next to the ghost of Christmas. And you can just see it's tiny. It's so cute though. I love it. It's like having a little bit of horror that you can just take around with you in your bag or anywhere you want to go. It's a really manageable size. So I'll move that out of the way. Now, as you can see, this is not camera trickery. I actually have two copies of this book and one of them is of course going to be going to one of you lucky followers. Um, I'll be doing a giveaway at the end so stick around for that if you want to own your own copy of this horrible Christmas book. Okay so here we go. So the book itself has beautiful red and gold foiling to the front all over the place not just in little touches here and there or just on the title but the foiling they really have gone to town with this and it's also all over the back as well absolutely stunning i love it i love the compactness of it first of all that's my favorite thing about it so far but i haven't looked in it yet properly so uh let's start so we have the usual inside cover which is this deep blood red with a pattern like a wallpaper pattern in black and then we have the usual title page what we get with alan's books so this beauty of horror ghosts of christmas a holiday spooktacular coloring book from idw publishing and then the wreath as you can see, is all made up of very creepy, spooky Christmas themed objects. So we've got uh, the rock star hand, uh, we've got a ghost, we've got a Santa, we've got an evil gingerbread holding a knife, we've got bats, we've got presents, bells, spiders, cats, all sorts. So then we go into the copyright page. I'll just zoom this in so we can see it really close up. Um, and you can see again, we've got a kind of a wreath thing going on with these hanging baubles and severed limbs. We've got Guliana's dog here and a little bow with a skull in the middle. So even, you know, these kind of rubbishy, boring pages have something beautiful to colour on them. And I really love this bit here. It says, any similarities to persons living or dead are purely coincidental. <laughs> love it, love it. So here we have our uh, nameplate page. And this says, naughty list, your name here. We've got a Santa hat hanging from the edge and we've got Guliana playing with her Christmas presents. So she has a doll here that has a knife stuck through it. She's stitching up her teddy bear and it just looks very, very creepy. She's also wearing her kind of festive clothing. And of course, with all the beauty of horror books, we do have a lost and found kind of page running a uh, theme running through it through the book so here you can see can you find Guliana's lost presents so we have masquerade masks severed unicorn heads bloody ice skates cans of worms all sorts and again we have the borders so something to color on every page now we do have a little bit of poetry here as we've come to expect I will read it to you in my most scariest voice <laughs> Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house Many creatures were stirring. I think one ate a mouse. <laughs> Limbed filled stockings hung by corpses with care. Guliana tied Santa to his favourite red chair. She screamed, now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. Tonight is the night we spread our affliction. With a wink of her eye and a twist of her head, poor old Saint Nick was surely quite dead. He spoke not a word and she went right to work dismantling Christmas with a smile and a smirk. She sprung in his sleigh and drove out of sight. Happy Christmas to all and to all a good fright. Love it, love it. So here we've got a border of animal skulls and stockings with scary snowmen on them. We've got some kind of zombie heads up here as well. And then we move on to the book itself. Now the first thing you'll notice is that every single 
other side of the page just contains the name, the uh, title illustration with the border. And that's because this is a one-sided book. So you can use your alcohol markers, your paints, your acrylics, your watercolours, you can go to town on this book because it is one-sided and you're not going to ruin anything on the back. It's also perforated. Every single page is easily removable with the micro perforations. So it's just, it's perfect, this book. I adore it already. So the first illustration is a wreath that looks as if it's made out of coral. Um, and we have some skulls, we have some eyeballs, and we have that bow with the skull again. But most importantly, we've got Guliana who has taken command of Santa's sleigh and her kind of reindeer pet dog, uh, is, is leading the sleigh there, but they, they don't have any kind of reins or anything because, you know, magic. So here we are with the next illustration. We have this, this little lad that I think is the same lad that runs all the way through the Beauty of Horror books. There's a few kids drawn, uh, particularly in the Haunted Playgrounds book, and I, I believe they're all the same characters, but they might not be. Uh, and you can see here that we have a melted snowman because he is holding in his hand a flaming torch. So he is going round just melting all of the snowmen everywhere, just being a devil basically. So we've got um, the North Pole sign, so we know he's right up top near Santa's house. Uh, and again, we have the kind of decorated border. Here we've got Santa himself, but he looks a little bit different to how we're used to seeing him. So he is an evil Santa. He's got stitches running up his head. He's got horrible pointed teeth and he's holding a bloody axe in his zombified hand. This is in a kind of frame. So as if it's on the wall, as if it's a kind of portrait. And uh, again, we have little bits of decoration on the frame. It's always very, very decorative, Alan's work. The next illustration, oh, what have we got here? So this looks like, um, well, it could be Mrs. Claus or it could just be um, a random grandma or something, but she is definitely not happy with how her biscuits have come out here. She has tossed her entire uh, tray of biscuits and cookies everywhere. She's covered in what could be cookie dough or it could be blood, who knows? It depends how you colour it. And uh, yeah, she's not looking happy at all. I think... Uh, Maybe she's come across this very jolly, jolly kind of festive tray of Christmas cookies and she's not having that at all. It's got to be more spooky and more frightening for her. But yeah, really funny that one. So next up, we have another um, sort of contained image within a frame. This is a gingerbread house that is burning down and the gingerbread men are running and fleeing from the scene and they look very, very distressed. So you can see that this house is just covered in flames. It's dripping with um, dripping with heat and flames here. And we've got a rather creepy skeletal looking hand coming in. Uh, I don't know whether he's putting in the gingerbread man with the skull on it or lifting it out, but very, very distressing scene anyway. It'd be brilliant to colour that one. Uh, so we have a fireplace here, a brick fireplace. You could do this as cobblestone, you could do it as natural red brick, you could do it any way you want really. But in the stockings we have that skeletal hand again poking out. We've also got a really cute but creepy caterpillar up here just slithering along. And in the fire are lots of different skulls, so human skulls it looks like. Why not try and make a fire out of them? I don't know if bone burns. It's a bit of a weird question to ask, rather worrying question to, to Google, I should think. Uh, but here we have um, a kind of uh, zombified looking cat. It looks very, very mangy, as if he's not eaten for quite some time and he's monitoring this fire here. Here we have a Christmas present that is bursting out with a kraken type creature that has eyeballs at the end of its tentacles and very sharp teeth. And we have a very scary looking elf with his pointed toe shoes and his bobble hat just uh, just screaming, screaming for no reason next to that. I don't know if he's scared of it or he's just delighted with what uh, with what he's got for Christmas, but there we go. Here we have a festive looking snow globe and the creatures inside look as if they are carol singing but would you want these people turning up on your doorstep in the dead of night? I doubt it. They are contained within this snow globe though luckily and they are standing in front of a Christmas tree decorated with skulls and candy canes. Here we have, what do we have? We have a lady in very swishy swashy kind of Victorian very elaborate dress. 
She has chains hanging from her sleeves rather than arms. And she's just stood there within a kind of symmetrical frame of evil snowmen holding bloody carving knives. And again, this zombified hand, which is grabbing onto a very sharp toothed gingerbread man holding a chainsaw. And all of this is all wrapped up with fairy lights. And I've just noticed here, we've got a very creepy skeleton with a cute Santa hat climbing up the arm. Next up, we have got two uh, demon gnomes, or yeah, I think they're gnomes. They look kind of gnomey elves. And they are either packing or unpacking this Christmas box here. I'm gonna say they're packing it up to leave under the tree of an unsuspecting child on Christmas morning. And they're packing it with severed heads and severed feet. And they're even holding their bloodied saws, their hacksaws. This is all done on top of a sort of DIY table with loads of implements of death. <laughs> We've got chisels and axes and hacksaws. This is inside the, um, the elves packing room, I think. Here we have a kind of wallpaper type illustration. There's no sort of um, central theme to it. It's just repeat patterns. So we've got the evil kind of dead nutcrackers, very skeletal. We've got a um, catapult <laughs> um, and all sorts of bits and bobs that I think you'll probably find on Guliana's missing presents list. This one is awesome. So here is Santa Claus looking very, very normal. Uh, I don't think he's got anything ghostly wrong with him. And judging by the look on his face, I doubt he was expecting Guliana to come and sit on his lap and then produce a bloodied knife. <laughs> he is not looking excited about the prospects of that at all. And you can see that he's sat on his kind of Santa's throne, grotto throne thing, uh, but he is surrounded by presents that are covered in blood. So. What can we say about this Santa? Is he secretly evil or very unsuspecting? Who knows? Here we've got an evil snowman. He has very creepy sort of muscle, kind of like, um, as if you would take your skin off and have the muscle underneath like flayed arms. And he has this huge, jagged, creepy smile. And again, he's surrounded by a decorative spherical frame. So Santa is again at the brunt of Guliana's mischievousness. mischievousness. <laughs> uh, he's been tied up to this chair and he has been gagged. And we have this awful looking uh, reindeer that is completely stripped to the bone, sort of taunting and teasing and torturing him there. And we have uh, the window that has been broken. So I don't know whether that is how he got in or if he just turned on his master halfway through the Christmas Eve. Who do, how do we know? We don't. We just have to speculate, but um, it all depends on, on what you take from these illustrations. They're very, very fun to kind of try and dismantle. So here we have a Christmas tree that is made out of what looks like a spine in the centre, and it's standing on a couple of feet. I'm not entirely sure what this is made out of here. It could be anything, to be honest. Uh, we have some Christmas decorations that Guliana is just applying to the, the different branches. Uh, they're made out of skeletal reindeer and candy canes and different skulls. And here are her presents underneath. This is called Merry Creepmas. So we've actually got some text to colour on this, which is really fun. You could even turn this into some sort of Christmas card or an embellishment for the top of a card if you wanted to. Uh, we have um, a skeleton wearing his Santa Claus beard and hat. And again, all of the different toys that Guliana has opened on Christmas morning. Here is a bundle of presents all wrapped up with that skeletal hand reaching out again. And we have a huge, creepy, horrible kind of, almost looks like a, a slice of orange or lemon on his back. Um, and he's just crawling all over these presents. I don't think you'd want to go anywhere near your gifts if a spider of that size and uh, beastliness was crawling all over them. We do have that little caterpillar here again. It's very sweet. This says, naughty elves, empty shelves. So... <laughs> This one, there's a lot of kind of Christmas characters tied up in this book. We have an elf here that has been tied and uh, staked to the floor. And he has also been gagged with some tape. And we have these creepy evil elves that have come along and taken his job. And they are dragging across here 
a, um, what do we call this? I know what it's called, you know what it's called, you know what I'm like for forgetting things, but I'm pretty sure that that elf is going to end up in there at some point. Here we have what could be the evil Santa from earlier on in the book, just looking at his fair that the children have left him. It says for Santa. We've got some nice looking Christmas cookies. There's nothing wrong with those at all. And a glass of, well, it probably could be milk. It looks a bit fizzy, so maybe there's a bit of poison in there. Who knows? Depends how you colour it again. Uh, and he's just contemplating, I guess, on whether to eat those down or... Yeah. <laughs> Here we've got an outside scene with this huge moon in the background and some bats flying around. And this is Guliana stood on top of a snowy chimney and she's just thrown her friend off there and he looks like he's enjoying it to be fair. So I think they're just having a, a bit of a festive game there. Here we've got the werewolf that often appears in Alan's books, often against that kind of backdrop of uh, the moon. And he is in this frame of something that looks as if it's been torn open. So maybe he's done that with his claws. Maybe he's looking out of a present. It depends how you want to look at it. But um, we've also got some uh, stalagmites and stalactites. Here's Guliana with her friend. I think they've made up now. I think they've, uh, they've got over the whole throwing him off the roof scenario and um, they are giving each other a nice gift for Christmas. It does contain a kind of octopus creature, but you know, I think that's what they're into. So I'm pretty sure that they're happy with that. There's also a banner down here if you wanna write anything or uh, again, maybe for a card, you could put someone's name on there from me to you. Here we've got Evil Santa again, and he has some reindeer heads in his sack. So I'm thinking that maybe that Santa that was tied up earlier in the chair has overcome his reindeer tormentor and turned evil himself. And here he is, here he is with his chainsaw going off into the distance. Here we've got a rather wallpaper type design. Um, it has loads of very simple Christmas tree shapes in the background. And then we have the reindeer names, Comet, Donna, Dashard, Rudolph, and obviously others down here. Um, and this looks like the skulls kind of mounted on the wall, which is really interesting. I would have liked to see this as an entirety with all of the reindeer on it. I think that'd be pretty cool. Here we have Santa who has been put into the oven by these evil little gingerbread men and gingerbread girls. Um, not being you know gender biased here and uh, they are holding their pointy implements we have a fork and a knife and what looks like a pizza cutter and a catapult and this one here is just holding what I call a waffle grid or a fish slice uh, I don't really know what he's going to do with that it's not the scariest of implements to be honest but he looks like he's having fun anyway and then here I believe this is the front illustration yep which has the thicker lines for you to colour and put someone's name in again if you want to. Now we have the create your own page, which we do find in our Beauty of Horror books at the end. And it's just letting you create your own horrible designs for these bauble shapes here. And on the very back, we have two pages of palette area for you to put in your different colours, test out your different markers, things like that. It doesn't really matter about bleed through though, to be honest on this, because it's one sided, so you don't have to really worry about that. On the back, we've got the key to Guliana's lost presence, but I'm going to flick by that quickly so you don't get any, uh, any spoilers. And then we've got the final poem of the book, so I'm going to read this to you again. Silent night, deadly night. All is wrong, all is not right. Screams can be heard from Santa's workshop afar, where undead elves pack entrails into jars. Snowflakes fall and cover their tracks. Underneath the white blanket lies a red bloody axe. Rudolph and friends will long be remembered, lining the halls with their heads mounted, severed. Guliana has her list and she's checking it twice. If you've been good, you will pay the price. The naughty ones will rule Christmas Eve because Guliana has more tricks up her sleeve. Now she's off to create her next haunted mess. Where she ends up is anybody's guess. And we have her down here with her naughty list, going off into the night, flying off to find her little minions. And again, we have that same uh, border or very similar border with the Christmas lights and the animal skulls. So there you go. 
absolutely amazing. I love it. As always with Alan's books, I'm not going to gush. You know how much I love his work. He's absolutely the best number one top horror illustrator uh, or, you know, creepy kind of illustrator in my book. And just in case you wanted to know what the paper is like, I know it's one-sided, but you're still probably curious. It is lovely and thick. There's the ping. It is kind of an off-white, very, very light ivory colour. It's definitely not pure white. Uh, and it does feel quite smooth. So I'm imagining that it does have a decent surface for coloured pencils because all of his other books do. This feels very, very similar. So, specs. Now, in the UK, this is £13.99. And in the US, it's $9.20. I don't know why there's such a discrepancy in price there. Um, I don't really know what the exchange rate is at the moment with Brexit and all that, so um, it might work out, I don't know. But it's going to be released on the 30th of October, so it's not quite out yet, but you can pre-order it. All the links are going to be in that description, as usual. And of course, you can try your severed hand at trying to get yourself a giveaway copy of this book. So this is going to be open worldwide. So you can join from absolutely anywhere in the world, try and get your hands on this. Uh, and I will be leaving details of that in the description box as well of how you can go and put your name forward for this. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this review. I've really enjoyed doing it as always. Thank you to Alan for creating yet another masterpiece for us to colour. And um, what else can I say? Just leave your comments below if you've enjoyed it. And do give a thumbs up, please. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.